Okay, here we're gonna do something a little different for our channel. Thought I'd show you guys some of the upgraded components a little bit more up closely and where you can get these. All the links for where you can get these items will be in the description below. So let's first start off with some metal coins. I know metal coins are not a big, or they're a big thing, but they're not necessarily new. Um, and a lot of these components I just keep in containers outside of the game and just move these from game to game. So I will kind of describe which some of the games that I do use these for, um, but money's pretty generic, obviously, anytime. Uh, there's usually money in the game or even, not necessarily money, but resources. So a lot of times a game like Arkham Horror where you need resources, a lot of times I will replace and just use money instead of the resources. Uh, so the ones I have here, these are called uh, the Dragon's Horde. And you can see they have a little bit of uh, kind of wear on them because we've had these for a little while. We've got kind of our, our big value with the dragon on them here. And then we've got kind of the mid value with a, a squid or tentacle. These are the ones that I do use for Arkham Horror because they look kind of like a Cthulhu-ish. And then we've got some with kind of a deer or a stag on them for, for uh, the lowest quantity. And again, I just keep, these are the ones I generally just keep out on the table or keep near my game shelf. So anytime we need money, we just go to one of those and grab uh, this one. Um, these are the first ones I got. These were labeled as pirate coins on Amazon. So let me grab one of each of these here. So we have each one of these values here. Um, these look a little cheaper. They're still pretty good quality though. I bought two packs of these just in case you're wondering. I first bought these for the game Clank. Uh, and now that I have these, I, I generally keep these right in the um, clank box. I usually just don't move these out. These stay in the clank box. We use these pretty much only for clank. And then these, now, I, now that I've got these, I just leave these out and can move these around. Now generally if I travel with a game, I still have the original coins and resources and whatnot for the game. And depending on where I'm going or how far, I may just leave these at home. Um, and then just use the original coins or resources for the game. But many times, if we're just at home, then I just pull out this box if I need resources. Um, so let me show you here some of the uh, replacement coins that we might use these for. Okay, so here's some tokens that I use in other games. Obviously, any game that uses money, um, you could use replace the money coins with. So this is a Cursed Doubloon from Dice Throne from the Cursed Pirate. So I will generally replace that one out instead of that. It's a very comparable size. And it's just kind of cool, even though I like, that's a really cool token with the skull on it. I really like that one. So I, a lot of times we'll replace that one out there. Uh, this is the money or the influence actually from Harry Potter game, uh, the Hogwarts Harry Potter battle. Um, we started replacing these. Obviously they look very similar to those. Um, Sometimes we use the bigger ones just because you're trading them around a lot. And then last couple times I'm like, we hardly ever use these big ones. Let's go ahead and use these big ones. And we seem to have enough for those. This is a Gloomhaven coin. This is after you kill a monster. Generally, you put that on the spot. So we will generally use that one there because we don't want a big one laying out on the game table. But you can see pretty comparable sizes. Obviously, this one's a little bit bigger for that and again any game that obviously uses money or sometimes even if it's not strict money if it's just a resource then we will replace it with the gold coins and the metal coins from there. Okay next up again is just a, a bin that I use to collect just random various tokens that we might use for various games instead of, again, putting them necessarily in the game box and so forth, I like carrying this around. So this has a whole bunch of different things in it. So first off, I wanna go through a couple of these from the same company. These are Orbitz tokens. Now these were designed for Star Wars Destiny, the card and dice game. Um, it's one of the few games that my daughter will not play. She's not a big fan of it, ironically. Even though it's very similar to Ashes, she's not a big fan of this one. But I used to play Star Wars Destiny quite a bit with my son until he went away um, uh, on his own. So I bought these tokens. 
and these were highly recommended from a friend of mine that was also playing Destiny at the same time. So we have each one of these to substitute. Here's the damage tokens, the cardboard ones that came with the game. Here's the cardboard resource, and here's the cardboard uh, shield just for comparison. So um, when you buy this set, you buy one, you get a fair amount of resources. Let's see, how many did I get? Three, four, five, six, like seven, eight, nine of those. So plenty enough for one player, not necessarily enough for a two player game. But uh, usually if I was going to tournaments and stuff with Star Wars Destiny, I didn't have to worry about. And then I got about half a dozen of the shield tokens as well. Now I did buy double of the damage tokens because it seems like I was always running out of those. But these are very high quality. I think they're said they're made from fiberglass. The thing I like about these especially is they're one-sided and three-sided versus having two different tokens for those. And then the, the shield tokens have uh, the good guys and the bad guys on each side where this is a little bit more generic. Not a huge deal, but that's kind of a nice little touch for those. So I truthfully have not used these very much, um, at least the shield and the resource tokens since I haven't played a lot of Destiny, but the damage tokens we definitely use for almost any game that uses some type of damage on it. So um, we use these, if you've watched, we've used these for Ashes, Rise of the Phoenix Born, we've used them for Keyforge. And again, I just keep these in a this box here and this is just on my game table. So anytime we need uh, tokens, we can just reach into the box and grab these. Um, sometimes I've used these crate ones for Arkham Horror, the LCG, instead of their cardboard ones. I'm not gonna necessarily pull those out, but they're almost, they almost look, you know, they're a crate type thing as well. So I've, I've sometimes will use those, but the damage ones we definitely use a lot. So I did buy uh, two packs of those. So I do have, you can see, I've got quite a few of these. We usually don't have too much problem running out of damage tokens. So um, these are Orbit's tokens. I'll link the description um, to the uh, Etsy channel or Etsy page. And I think he sells them on his own channel. I found these kind of just as a random find on Etsy. These are actually pewter cast metal discs. Um, I just liked them because of the skulls on them. So um, we've used these for various purposes, just kind of whenever we need some type of counter or something in whatever game. Um, before I got these, which I'll talk about in just a minute, we did use these for stun counters in Keyforge because I never bought the original starter kit. I just bought decks and then, because uh, I always had tokens so I just have kind of made do with whatever tokens that I've had from there. So I've kind of gone through um, various ones and these worked really good for stunning. They're just, they're kind of, there's again, a handmade pewter cast from what I understand and then painted. So you could use these in magic for plus one counters or, or something like that, but anything you need to kind of put a skull on, you could use them for damage as well, um, even though you'd have to put one for each one on there. Uh, the next two here, these are just random hearts tokens. They'll probably not show up on my table, so I'll put them in my hand. So they're a little smaller in comparison, you can see, to the damage tokens. These are from Broken Token. Um, just a big collection of hearts anytime we need, maybe. It is a little harder. I don't use them as much as these just because, again, they don't have any numerical value on them, but they're just kind of nice to have from there. All right, these then. Um... These actually I found very recently um, our Harry Potter lightning bolt tokens were already starting to wear out on us with very few, few playthroughs. So I went on the internet to see if I could find any lightning type tokens. And I just happened to follow up on these also from the broken token. These are actually official, well not official, but because they're not from Fantasy Flight, but they're, they were stun tokens for Keyforge. So I thought, well, they've got lightning bolts on them. So now technically they kind of serve again, a double purpose for stun. I mean, again, you could use these for almost any game that you need some type of, of marker. Um, actually, I could see using these in King of Tokyo because you gain those lightning bolts in King of Tokyo instead of the green cubes. I just thought of that, you could use those, but we use these to replace the stun ones um, from there. All right, so I forgot when I was grabbing my tokens to compare that I forgot to grab. Here's the Harry Potter token, the lightning one. Obviously, it's quite a bit different. It would have been kind of cool to have a black um, P 
piece with the yellow, but uh, again, these are already, you can see they're already starting to show. Some of these were, I probably should have grabbed one that was even falling apart, but some of these are starting to show, and we've only played maybe half a dozen, well, we've played quite a few games with it, I guess, maybe a dozen to 15 games with it, but those are already starting to fall apart. So um, I found these to replace these, but these ended up being labeled as stun tokens for Keyforge, but again, a nice little comparison from there. Okay, last of all, what I have for today, these are custom-made keys for Keyforge. Like I mentioned before, I didn't buy the starter kit, so I don't have any of the original stuff. Uh, these are called cabochons, or cabochons, kind of depending on who you're talking to. I made these myself, a um, couple different ways, and if people are interested, I'll show you. These are actually very easy to make, very cheap ingredients, very low-key, very easy to make these. Um, now the, the keys in Keyforge are, you know, the three different colors. And these just happen to be, these colors that I found here matched exactly what we have um, in the Hero Realms character packs for little health cards. So they had these exact colors to match the different factions. So these worked out perfectly color-wise. And then you buy the little metal bases. This is a glass dome and you basically just glue that, glue them together. So these are what I use for my keys in Keyforge. So I didn't have, the only, I only had one of each of these colors to make for Keyforge. So when my daughter wanted some custom keys made, what we did is we went to the Pokemon Energies. Now the, the if you notice the borders are a little bit different because I had to find, I found kind of a mass found on Amazon. I, these were pretty expensive. I only found like a box of these at like Michael's. Um, I only had a few of these. So I went and when I learned how to do this, then I decided I might as well go on Amazon and I bought a little bit different ones, um, but I bought like a hundred of the bases and a hundred of the glass tops. So I have a whole bunch of these for various um, tokens and so forth. So we just took Pokemon Energy and turned those into the keys. So it's not an exact, quite an exact match, but it's it's kind of a cool little thing. Um, so we turned the, the Pokemon into Keyforge keys. Okay, kind of going along with the previous clip. Um, again, to show you, I've made a whole bunch of these. Um, again, I kind of found this idea on the internet that a couple people were doing these. So I took a bunch of my old magic cards, and I'll get these out here in just a second, and I, I have the little uh, one inch center punch. I punch out the little face on that, and then I glue the, the face into the, the thing and glue it together. Um, those are probably dark. So I um, took a whole bunch of magic cards to try and find some different monsters and different things that we might need in different games. I use this a lot of time in Arkham Horror. I use this in our House on the Betrayal. Anything that you need is kind of like a monster token. Um, sometimes I'll replace the, you know, little cardboard standees if we need to and so forth. Um, so I've got some different, I just try and find the different types of monsters. So there's some kind of dragons or snakes. We'll use these in um, Arkham Horror, the card game as well, the LCG. Um, I'll put the card that represents the monster off to the side, and then I'll use this as the monster that moves around the cards because it's a little bit easier to manage than having the full card. If you've ever played Arkham, you know what it's like to move. Those cards are kind of a pain. So I just kind of try to find here some different people. You know, if I need a wizard um, or whatever I need, I try to just find a whole bunch. Here's a couple of... And sometimes I've doubled them up. Sometimes I've found some slightly different ones. So here's some fire dragons. So a lot of people, I, I got this idea from guys playing D&D &D using these. And again, these were very easy to make. I took a whole bunch of, again, I had a whole stack of old magic cards and I just found some, some cool looking artwork that I thought got the center punch, uh, an inch round punch. Just punch it out, the card, and you just glue this in with some, um, what's it called? Uh, that fancy craft glue, I can't, it's slipping my mind right now. So again, I just have some of them are duplicate. And then I just found this nice little box that kind of contains them all. And again, this is just kind of out on our game table. I have a whole bunch, I've got skeletons, I've got, um, for Arkham Horror, I just, you know, with the kind of the, the weird stuff in Arkham Horror, I just found some of the, the weird stuff in Magic the Gathering to kind of complement that. And a lot of them I did have two, so I kind of made doubles of them. And yeah, just keep this on the, we just keep this in the game shelf. So anytime we need some type of monster token, if we don't want to use cardboard standees or an Arkham Horror instead of 
having the card, we'll put the card off to the side just so we know what stats and everything the monster has, and then we'll put the token and move that around the board from there. Um, again, if people are interested, let me know. I'll show you, uh, I'll make a whole video on how to make these. Relatively cheap, inexpensive, um, but pretty nice. They end up pretty high quality stuff. So that's most of our upgraded components that we use throughout our game. Hope you enjoyed some of that. I will leave again the links uh, in the description below where I, I got all of these. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care.